Hello, and welcome to the Office of International Admissions and Programs presentation on the STEM OPT extension. This presentation is intended to inform you, our international F1 students, about the application process for the STEM OPT extension and details on completing the Form I-983. Please review our other presentations for an overview of STEM OPT and the STEM OPT regulations and reporting requirements for more information. If you have further questions after reviewing these presentations, please contact us using the information shown on this slide. Please take a moment to review these common terms that we will be mentioning throughout the presentation. DHS is the Department of Homeland Security. DHS oversees all government agencies related to international students and the security of the United States. USCIS approves and or denies all STEM OPT applications. ICE can make site visits to your employer to ensure compliance with the STEM program. SEVP is the Student and Exchange Visitor Program of which CVIS is the reporting function. This is where we tell SEVP information about students, such as your employment information and physical living address. STEM is the acronym for the types of programs, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that are eligible for this extension of OPT. E-Verify is the number that your employer needs to provide to you in order to qualify for the STEM OPT extension on the I-765 form. To be eligible for STEM benefits, your employer must participate in the E-Verify program. Information about E-Verify from USCIS can be found at the end of this presentation. The CIP or SIP code can be found on your I-20 under the major slash program information block. This code is required field on the form I-983. A link to the STEM SIP code list is provided at the end of this presentation. Your DSO is your International Student Advisor. You can find out who your advisor is by looking at the OIP webpage for current information. A link is provided at the end of this presentation. We will briefly go over the application process when first applying for the STEM OPT extension. Apply up to 100 days before your post-completion OPT ends in the ISD portal. USCIS will only accept applications sent to them 90 or days or less from the end of the post-completion OPT. Remember, you must be in an approved post-completion OPT period to be eligible. Generally, OIP can take 7 to 10 business days to process a complete submission. At peak times, this may be longer. Remember, we process on a first-come, first-served basis and will be unable to expedite any application. Please be sure to plan ahead. USCIS must receive the I-20 with the STEM OPT recommendation on it no later than 60 days after it was issued. They must also receive it before your post-completion OPT ends. USCIS takes a minimum of 90 days to process. Remember, if your application is not complete, you may receive a request for evidence or RFE. If you get an RFE, please contact your international student advisor by email with a scanned copy of the entire RFE so we can assist you with your response. Failure to respond within the given timeline and without the requested information could result in a denial. Please be aware that if your post-completion EAD card expires and you haven't received a decision back from USCIS regarding your STEM OPT, you can continue to work up to 180 days with the USCIS receipt. Here you will find the documents that are required to upload into the STEM OPT application in the ISD portal. Please note that file size must be under 15 MB. Submit the following documents in one PDF on the International Student Documents ISD portal under the Alumni tab. The I-765 form. We will review some common I-765 errors on the next slide. I-9883 form. Sections 1 through 6 must be completed. Do not submit completed self-evaluations at the time of application. Valid passport photo biographical page or pages. 
your I-94 printout, or a copy of the I-94 card front and back if you received one at the time of your entry to the U.S. Your F-1 U.S. visa or I-797 approval notification for F-1 status. Two recent and new identical U.S. size passport photos. Do not submit a photo previously used for another application or photos that are over six months old. Check or money order for 410 U.S. dollars payable to U.S. Department of Homeland Security. You may also choose to apply and pay via credit card. Do not upload the credit card form into the ISC portal. Keep a copy of the form for your records in the event that your application is sent back for credit card processing issues. Send copies of your previous EAD card front and back. Your official transcript that states the degree you have earned and a copy of your degree is recommended though not required. When sending your application to USCIS, you may take the official transcripts out of the sealed envelope as USCIS is looking only for the official transcript paper. Here you will find some common errors made on the I-765. Your international advisor does their best to review the I-765 and make suggestions for any necessary changes. However, this is your application to USAS and you are solely responsible for the completion of the I-765. Your advisor makes suggestions based on their knowledge of USCIS forms. If changing employers during the time you have a STEM OPT extension application pending with USCIS, you should First, complete an OPT update in the ISD portal. Submit a completed Form I-983 in the ISD portal with the new employer information and upload a copy of your I-797 receipt notice for your STEM OPT application. Request an I-20 reprint so that you can include this in your information to USCIS. OIAP will send your updated I-20 and employer information to USCIS via email. You do not need to contact USCIS or send them anything via post. We will make your new I-20 available per your request in the I-20 reprint after updating USCIS. There is no evidence that this process delays your STEM OPT application in any way. Please take out your I-20 at this time. We will be reviewing the key areas of the Form I-983 that are important for you to know when completing it. Although you and your employer must complete the I-983 together, today we will only review the form where we think you will need additional information. This form can be completed as typewritten or handwritten. The name of the school where STEM degree was earned. This should be UHCL unless you are applying for STEM based on a previously earned degree at another accredited U.S. institution. DSO name. Please refer to our webpage at https colon backslash backslash www.uhcl.edu slash academics slash advising slash international for a current staff and alphabet breakdown. Please enter the name and contact information of the advisor currently responsible for your service record. This may or may not be the same as who is currently listed on your I-20. You can also find the link at the end of this presentation. The STEM eligible SIP code can be found on your I-20 in the Sto Program of Study box under Major. For the Based on Prior Degree section, the answer will be no if you wrote UHCL in the above box names, name of school where STEM degree was earned. If you are applying for STEM based on a previously earned degree from another institution, the answer will be yes.
The employment authorization number is the USCIS number that is shown on your EAD card. Please read Section 2 thoroughly and sign before scanning it. Pen, ink, and DocuSign verified signatures are accepted. Typed font signatures are not accepted by UHCO without a DocuSign verified symbol. Your employer should complete Section 3. If you are continuing with the same employer from your post-completion OPT, please advise your employer that the start date of employment should be the first day of your STEM extension, i.e. one day after the end date of your current OPT EAD card. If, however, you are completing this form because of a change in employment while on STEM OPT, the start date would be the start date with the new employer. You are required to complete the compensation area this information is kept confidential. DHS wants to ensure that all students are paid similarly to a U.S. worker, and so this information is used for that reason only. Your employer will determine who is eligible to sign Section 4 of the Form I-983. This could be a different person from Section 6. For example, this could be an HR manager or supervisor. Pen, ink, and DocuSign signatures are accepted. Typed font signatures are not accepted by UHCO unless they are verifiable. Please ensure that the information in employer site information is accurate. Where are you actually working? This may or may not be the same as the employer address listed in Section 3. This is the information that is needed and that ICE will use for any site visit. OIAP cautions remote work from home opportunities while on STEM OPT. Name of official refers to the person who is overseeing your training plan and is familiar with and will monitor your goals and performance. This may or may not be the same person as in the previous section. Your DSO is also looking to see that the physical living address that you typed into the STEM OPT application on the IST portal is nearby the address listed in Section 5 of your I-983. For example, if you say you live in Arkansas, but you listed your work location in New Jersey, we're going to ask you to clarify the issue, which will lead to the I-20 being delayed. This section should be individualized just for you and should include sufficient detail in each section. Your DSO is looking for detailed training information and how it is directly related to your major program of study. For example, if you have a degree in biology, your job or training should be related to that field and should be clearly explained on the Form I-983. Just because you took two classes in another area, say maybe marketing, does not mean that you can work in marketing. The goals should be clearly outlined and specific to your training, skills, and what you will achieve in a given period of time. Your employer must also describe how they evaluate your performance. If they already have a performance evaluation system, they can describe that. Please note you can attach additional pages if more room is necessary. To reiterate this point, your DSO is also looking to see that the physical living address that you typed into the STEM OPT application on the IST portal is nearby the address listed in Section 5 of your I-983. Your employer will determine who can sign this form. This may or may not be the same person as Section 4. It should be someone who is familiar with your training plan and the person who is conducting your evaluations. Pen, ink, and DocuSign signatures are accepted. Typed font signatures are not accepted by UHCL. Self-evaluations are due in one-year intervals and are not due at the time of application for STEM OPT. Please refer to the presentation STEM OPT Extension Reporting Requirements for more information regarding the evaluations. Following is a list of suggested resources for further information on the STEM program.
Should you need further information or still have questions regarding your specific situation, please contact us using the information listed above.